I'm going to be talking to you about brand reputation and social media. Um, the thing about brand reputation, the thing about social media is we could probably have a full conference today on just these two topics. So 25 minutes is a really kind of quick, quick way into it. Um, however, I'll be around uh, throughout the day if there are aspects that I haven't covered that you do want to talk about. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a lot out of it today. Uh, so who am I? Um, so as Nick said, I'm the head of PR and communications at 123reg. Uh, I'm also a qualified journalist. Um, I have a history degree where I specialized in media and how historical events were being covered by media throughout time. Uh, so media is where I sit. It's what I'm really interested in. It's kind of exactly what, what, what I wanted to do. Um, I've worked at publications uh, including The Independent and The International Business Times. Uh, on top of that also, I've worked for a financial consultancy, um, uh, creating, creating work for them as well. Um, so really the thing that I'm really interested in is um, about three years ago, I lived in Berlin for one year. Uh, in that time, I did a little bit of investing in small businesses. I also worked in a number of startups in a really cool industry in, in Berlin. So hopefully I understand what you guys want from this, uh, what's interesting for you, the challenges that you face, and hopefully we'll, we'll get through some of those. Um, I wanted to start by just showing a quick video. Uh, for those people who don't really understand what this topic is all about, uh, just to show you a quick clip to, um, to kind of get, get things moving. Yes, I understand. Can I transfer you to customer relations? Absolutely. I couldn't be more sorry about this. I know, this, I know. We're all trying to get to the bottom of this. I am upset. Don't I sound upset? Okay. It is disgusting. I totally agree. Well, we're going to be recalling all of that paper. We have a crisis. Apparently, a disgruntled employee at the paper mill decided that it would be funny to put an obscene watermark on our 24-pound cream letter stock. 500 boxes has gone out with the image of a beloved cartoon duck performing unspeakable acts upon a certain cartoon mouse that a lot of people like. And Dunmore High School sent out their prom invitations on this paper, went home to all the kids. Yeah, I gotta call that on. No, 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 not good enough. This is a Keystone account. I want you in the school, in person. Sure. I want you to bring a partner. I'll go. Just think, when a company screws up, best thing to do is call a press conference. Alert the media and then you control the story. Wait for them to find out, and the story controls you. Truly, truly sorry. I don't accept your apology. Watermark was obscene and horrifying. Well, we are extremely sorry. I think that you should resign. <sighs> mm, okay, well, um, wasn't really my fault. The guys at the paper mill. You're the, head the guy of at the paper mills. No, no, no. You're the head of the company. There is no way I will resign. It wouldn't be fair. Not to the good workers I work with, not to my clients, and especially not to me. Let's not forget who this whole resigning business is about anyway. If I could leave you with one thought, remember, it wasn't me. They are trying to make me an scapegoat. If I am fired, I swear to God that every single piece of copier paper in this town is going to have the F word on it. That was your best apology video ever. I thought so too. Okay. <laughs> so a kind of uh, funny way of looking at things, but certainly a lot of those, those aspects will ring true from what I'm saying. So uh, we will be talking about... Um, Brand, your reputation is at stake. Uh, to any small business, uh, your brand is probably the most important part of what you have. Uh, the tools in which you can, you, can, um, you can find out what people are saying about you, engaging with, and then as Nick said, we'll move on to some crisis management, which hopefully will be better than the clip we just saw. So to start with, let's look at a, um, a quick uh, example of what we've dealt with. Um, I know there's probably a lot of people at 123 Edge at the moment, probably with their hearts in their mouths, thinking, what's he doing? Um, but I think this is actually a really important uh, example to show you. So in May 2012, 123 Edge was hit by a large-scale DDoS attack. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the DDoS attack because 
Fundamentally, maybe I don't understand everything about it, but fundamentally, it's a traffic surge that brought down our servers. It brought down our service, which meant, uh, paradoxically, it brought down customer services like yourselves. Um, this was only the third day of my uh, tenure at 123Reg, so this was something that I was dealing with. Uh, at the same time, I was working at the social media team and the PR team at the same time, so working together. So we, we had a lot of dealings with this. And as I said, this was a very severe attack um, that brought down your websites. It brought down our website. Um, although within 15 minutes we rerouted the traffic, uh, our site was back up, customers um, were, were seeing their sites back up. We did have some periodic issues for a couple of hours, which, which meant our reputation was at stake. Um, and the way that we went about it and the way that we in engaged and communicated to the customers and to the media was very important. So there was a lot of media attention, probably the biggest news source, uh, if not the world, certainly in the UK, um, had, cr had written this article. Um, I haven't shown you the article, but I assure you, the article was not negative about 123reg. It talked about DDoS attacks in an industry, um, and an industry, industry capacity, and what the industry had to do, and security companies needed to do, to prevent this. Now, this article could have been a lot worse. It could have spoke about how 123reg wasn't um, supporting small businesses and didn't have the infrastructure to do that. However, it didn't. It was a very positive news story. Um, not a positive news story, but we managed to turn it around. And the way that we did this is through uh, a couple of things. So we have some fantastic customer support staff that were talking to customers, that were un and they were talking and they were engaging with customers. We also had a very strong social media strategy uh, where customers couldn't actually come onto our website and ask us issues, so they were tweeting us. So we, we had a, a very strong team uh, replying to customers and keeping them informed. And then kind of moving on from this, uh, so media articles weren't that bad. Um, they gave us some good positive light. Um, customers were starting to get their websites back up. Uh, we also won a social media crisis management award for the way that we dealt with this crisis. So it's that your brand at any time is under threat um, through lots of things that you can't control. But it's the way that you react to things or the way that you proactively engage with things is, is kind of very important. Uh, so I've kind of spoken about what we're going to talk about, but I guess at the moment, what's it actually going to mean to you? Um, the first thing is you're all small businesses. Um, you are going to hear today about loads and loads and loads of different things that you need to do. You must be thinking, why on earth does this matter to me? Um, so we're going to really be talking why reputation does matter. Uh, the second part is, within that, is the tools that you can use to really understand what people are saying and to engage and react to those conversations. So we're going to show you a couple of three tools that you can use um, that, that really gets to the heart of what people are saying. And thirdly, obviously, how do we deal with crisis? So I wanted to talk about brand first to kind of set up the brand reputation and what brand means to us all. Ah, okay. So this is a very convoluted sentence, but let's read it out together. Brand is considered a, as a reflection of the spirit and soul of an organization. This proclamation, I've always wanted a proclamation, uh, purposes that brand is not representation of a company's product, its name, logo, trademark, and symbol of firm that distinguishes it, as this is where the core of brand loyalty takes its position. Brands show loyalty of end users. After continuous usage of brand, consumers feel it part of them. And that was written by David Aker in 1991. So I think there are two very important parts of this sentence. And the first one is that consumers, it's what consumers feel for that organization. And the second, is that in some way there's an acceptance that brands lose their ownership to end users, to the consumer, that it's the consumer that owns that brand. Maybe that's too far, but I think that's a really important part. And take, I think, two of my favorite brands at the moment. Kind of, in 1991, David Aker wrote this. Maybe it still stands true. So the first one is Airbnb, and the second one is Uber. So their brand is, in the heart, is actually in control of their customers and their users. If Airbnb has an issue uh, with one of their hotels or, or, or a customer using one of the, the, the hotels, 
um, that issue is then actually uh, put on top of Airbnb. It becomes their issue. But actually, they've given that, that assurance is out. So it's a very interesting kind of part that I think that that's where reputation uh, really does, does take, on, take into an issue of its own. So now I want to talk a little bit about social media and the importance of um, where social media is lying within brand reputation. So there's no halt to social momentum. Uh, uh, source uh, Kiss Metrics reports that Facebook usage is up 40% from 2013. Uh, Twitter apparently is adding 300,000 users a day. Um, 2.5 billion photos are uploaded to Facebook every single month. Uh, and it's of UK consumers, 78% of those consumers trust online social media recommendations. So chances are, if you're a brand, if you're, if you're, if you're trading, social media is going to be a massive part of what you do. But those stats on their own, they're just stats. They're just large-scale pieces of information that mean very little. But I think this is where it really matters. So in the same survey, what topics do consumers often discuss on social media? Uh, this is consumers. 69% of all discussions are about the feel, what consumers feel of a product they have just purchased. Or 55% of conversations are about the company's customer service. And 45% of, of, of that is specific companies' treatment of their employees. All brand reputation issues. Consumers are talking about them. But then let's move on to what um, companies are talking about on social media. So 88% of companies are talking about the quality of their products. Of course, that's a brand issue. And 85% are talking about reputation of a whole of their business. So there is an absolute connect between what consumers are talking about and what brands are talking about and how reputation management and how reputation of that brand is, is, is being spoken about on social. So does your reputation actually matter? Um, well, of course it does. Um, consumers are increasingly using social media, uh, social word of mouth, online reviews, and other online content to form a judgment about your business. Now, the question they're asking before they do anything, when they go onto Google, is, should I trust you? Now, you can think for a couple of seconds or, or as you kind of go through today, are there any choke points in your business where you think, hmm, maybe that's causing? Do they trust me because of that? Are, I, have, I put my, um, have I put my website link onto, onto my social media? Do they know where to go? Is that the choke point? Have I got so lots of negative uh, reviews or, 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 or such? Um, you know, is there a choke point? Are, can, are people, when they're coming to your site, thinking, I don't trust this person. I don't trust this business. Um, lots of reasons why we, how we can get into that. But uh, hopefully, with, um, as we go through, that will become a lot clearer. It's about creating a positive web presence. Uh, it's to make your brand one that people trust. Uh, to an online consumer, it doesn't matter fundamentally how great your product is. Um, if people don't trust you, they don't care. Um, and that was shown in, what the, in, in the slide before about what consumers are talking about. They're talking about the quality of products. If they don't, if they don't and, 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 and the customer service that they're receiving, if those two aren't correct, if that's not happening, then it doesn't matter how good the product is. People aren't going to use it. So what may you have to control? So I just wanted to open it uh, up to you guys and ask what, you th what kind of issues you think you may have to control in your business. Anyone? Reviews. Reviews? Yep. So negative, positive reviews from social media or from review sites. Uh, anybody else? OK, that's fine. Um, you may have a supplier issue. Um, a supplier may have let you down. But your customers are going to come to you and ask you, what have you done about that? Um, you may have a disgruntled customer. Um, you know, whatever, whatever issue has arisen, you may have to deal with that. Uh, negative social media comments. You might have someone uh, coming onto your social media, um, asking you very probing questions. You have to react and you have to deal with that. Um, in a more large scale firm, uh, you may have a data or an information loss. Um, quite scary to think about that that might happen, but it's something you may have to deal with. Uh, or you may have a major website error. You may have a copy error. 
you may have a um, pricing error that you're going to have to deal with. So th these are just a couple of examples to get you thinking about, are any of those things, could they happen to your business? Uh, if this happened tomorrow, could you deal with it? Would you know how to deal with it? Would you like to deal with it or would you want, not want to? Um, I think if you start thinking about the examples that could happen in your business, then you, start to want, then you start to work back and work out, can I deal with that? Who would deal with that? Is it me or is it another a member of my team or is it somebody else who would deal with that? So it's about jumping over a crisis. So we kind of just want to move on to uh, the tools that you can use to monitor these conversations. So it's been quite clear running through this, the brand reputation and the management of it is absolutely key. But where are these conversations happening? Well, they're happening on social media. They're happening uh, as an all-encompassing uh, question of social media. So as, as we said earlier about online reviews as well, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of the mainstream social conversations. So the first really good tool to use, uh, and this is of no... Um, uh, to, to Google, uh, Google Alerts, absolutely brilliant. We use it, I use it. Um, it's a fantastic way of getting conversations that are happening online through to your inbox so you can start reacting to them. Um, if you go to google.com forward slash alerts, uh, fill in your brand name or your search queries, the things that you think people are talking about that, that are considered to your brands, uh, set up a few alerts, start getting some alerts in, see, see whether you're missing any of these conversations, and then you can start, start learning how to deal with them. Uh, to begin with, you may start getting hundreds and hundreds of alerts because maybe the key names, keywords are too broad, um, but you'll, you'll get the hang of it and you'll start bringing it down to actually what, what your brand is about. Uh, social mention it is a, another great tool. Um, uh, very easy to use. You find out about mentions that are happening on, on your social media channels and you can engage with them and start looking at them. Uh, Twitter. Creating a search on Twitter just for your brand name. Uh, do you know what people are saying about you? Are they saying? If you don't have Twitter, have you looked to just to see what people are saying? Uh, maybe it will push you into the, into the need of actually having a, um, a social media account. Um, but Twitter is a fantastic resource of just searching about what people are saying. And uh, another great tool to use is TweetDeck, where you can have all of your social media profiles in one, um, and you can, you can start engaging with, with customers across and the social media platforms that you have. Um, the most important thing about all of these tools, in some way or another, they're free. All it costs you is your time and your effort to put into these. So protecting your brand, knowing what's happening on social, it actually doesn't cost any money. Um, all it costs is, well, your time. Um, and it's important to, to make sure that you put that, those hours in. So I wanted to just uh, put two examples in front of you of moving into, now we're thinking about, so something may have happened, we're thinking about conversations that we've dealt with, and now we're looking at, we now need to do something. Does anybody have any idea what this relates to? BP oil crisis. Uh, and the famous quote from uh, the CEO, I'd like my life back. Um, I think a really important part of this, and I think what is, is, is missed in all this, is that 11 rig workers died on the Deepwater Horizon rig. Um, within all of, these, all of these cartoons that are created, they always mock the CEO, but 11 people did die. Um, as a public relations strategy, it was a disaster. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, it's a classic example of reputation management misfiring. Uh, the event itself which was the biggest offshore spill in US history, uh, was a tragedy and an environmental disaster. Uh, obviously, Tony Hayward was the CEO who, who, who made, this, made this awful quote. Um, but it wasn't just what was said to the media. It was also what they didn't do on their website. Um, so it wasn't just a PR. It, um, it wasn't just a PR disaster. Uh, their website had scant information of the disaster. Uh, the situation, uh, and only minimal links to their Facebook and Twitter accounts. They actually removed some of the links to their accounts uh, so people weren't getting to conversations that were happening. happening. Um, also, uh, on their websites, they were creating, uh, they were also offering potential plaintiffs $5,000 to not issue lawsuits. So they weren't dealing with the issue. They were just trying to hide it. And I think that's an important part. 
of it is that we need to react and we need to be open and we need to be honest about things that have happened. Yeah, BP oil crisis. Uh, case study two, uh, slightly uh, less tragic. Ryan found two more four bottle packs of dogfish heads Midas, Midas touch beer. When we drink, we do it right. I've practiced this, hashtag getting slithered. Uh, any idea where this comes from? Would it surprise you to hear that it came from the American Red Cross Twitter account? Uh, I think we can all probably work out what's happened here. Uh, one of Red, uh, American Red Cross's social media employees accidentally sent this tweet out to, on, their, um, on their official uh, channel. Um, strangely enough, it was actually there for one hour um, before anyone noticed. Um, social media director uh, Wendy Harmon followed up. Uh, so once it was noticed, brought to the attention, uh, their social media director got involved and she, um, she followed up with a humorous tweet from the official Twitter account acknowledging their mistake. Um, but also, I think what was really good about this one um, maybe because American Red Cross is a charity and it has goodwill to begin with, potentially, uh, it was able to kind of f f humor, by humor, get its way, get their, get their, um, get out of this uh, quite tricky situation. Um, so Dogfish Head um, also embraced the hashtag getting slizzard. So it, it became a joke, um, which is, but, but it only became a joke because they engaged with it. They accepted their mistake and they, and they got, they got goodwill because of that. Um, so there was a bit of buzz. Um, bloggers and Twitter sphere kind of went, went a bit crazy. Um, it was fun. It was a bit of fun. The company was fine. No harm done. But it is a very important part that if you do give your Twitter accounts out to other people and you, you, or you use Twitter accounts uh, personally, make sure you know who they are. Make sure they're using uh, systems like TweetDeck and they're not just logging in through the interfaces because mistakes can happen. Uh, this could have been a very different tweet, um, as you've probably in lots of different scenarios, um, and this result may not have happened. So if it does happen to you, uh, my biggest piece of advice to you is integrity is vitally important. It's being honest. It's being open um, about a situation that's occurred. Um, a few bit of, bit of advice um, in kind of my day-to-day -day job that, that we may do. Um, this may not work entirely for you, but please, um, please talk to me if you think there's, there's other things that we've missed here. Um, first thing is work out what's happened. Talk to the people that, that, that whether it's a supplier issue, talk to the suppliers, get the facts, uh, and then start working out whether you need to create a statement, whether that goes on your blog, on your website, on your social media, but make sure you get the facts before you even begin to think about communicating a uh, scenario. I think it's also very important to acknowledge and empathize with the, the users that are affected. Um, I think probably something BP, excuse me, didn't do is they didn't empathize with people. It was about them or it was about um, Andy Hayward. Um, I don't think that was an intentional thing, but that's how it came across. Uh, so make sure you acknowledge the situation and you empathize with people. Uh, as I say, be open and honest. Transparency is vital. Think about how you're going to be perceived two or three months down the line. If people find out that you've hid information, if people find out that you may not have been completely honest about what had happened, um, how are they going to think of your brand three months down the line? What social media conversations are still going to be happening about your brand? And are people then going to start asking the questions, do I trust you? And Probably every single business from small businesses like yourselves, medium to large firms like 123Reg, even giants like Google, need to prepare and they need to practice dealing with these situations. Um, if I can leave with, a fine, with, with some more information in terms of uh, if this does happen to you. Having a plan of action is vitally important, but you've got to test that plan. You've got to find out, does it have any chinks in the armor? Uh, are there things that could go wrong that, that, that aren't in the plan? If you don't know, if you don't create this plan, if you don't practice it, if you don't test it out, you haven't got a chance of knowing. And then, unfortunately, if this does happen to you in your businesses, um, then you have, a, you have a situation where you're unprepared, when you actually thought you were prepared. And that's a very, very nasty and quite um, tricky situation to be in. Um, but I think it, 
potentially comes across that this is very negative. Um, it's very, so we've, we've kind of spoken about design and it's great and we talk about emotion, this is great. And then I've come along and said, wow, we're all in trouble here. Um, it's not really the case. I think we do have to be, um, we have to be mindful that issues can happen. We do have to be mindful that when, when an issue occurs that is completely out of our control, we have to deal with it. But you can turn these things around into very, very positive news stories, as, as, as I've shown. You know, we're not the only company to have done that, and we certainly won't be the last company. Um, and I think it's, it's a very important thing is once you, once you get the facts, once you acknowledge, once you empathize, once you've been, once you've been honest, suddenly goodwill comes to you, as was shown in the American Red Cross uh, situation. They said a PR guy couldn't make a sales pitch. Um, so let's try it. Uh, your reputation begins with your domain name, 123 is a domain registrar, that's it. Um, but it's vitally important that you think about brand reputation also in the naming of your, um, of your business and your, in your domain name. Um, slightly uncomfortable showing some of these, but uh, it's, it's not a, um, nothing to be, to be worried about. Clearly we have uh, an issue here. Uh, but it's unintentional. It's, it's not, these people didn't mean to do this, but if you don't think about it, if you don't read it, um, you know, you've, you've got a problem on your hands. Uh, another one, uh, again, uh, again, you know, again, unintentional, and also uh, one down the bottom. So think about how words can, can be misconstrued. Uh, how was that for a sales pitch? Did it work? I don't know. Uh, okay, cool. So, first and foremost, keep calm. Uh, crises are there to be dealt with. They're there to be uh, to challenge you, to to make you think about your business, to understand where the chinks in your armor are. Um, but certainly, keep calm and think about what you're doing, um, because the importance of your reputation matters more than ever, especially to small businesses. Um, it's it's almost uniform across. Small to, to large businesses, you know, reputation is, is everything that we have, and it's something that we really hold key to our success is, is, going to be, is going to be how people think about our brands. But sometimes situations are beyond our control, beyond your control, uh, even beyond uh, companies like Google's control. Um, but they need to be addressed and they need to be managed in a way that works for you. Um, as Robert was saying uh, before, uh, in terms of kind of creating humor and emotion, it's got to be what works for you. Uh, and if you're happy and if it, you can sleep at night about the way you've dealt with something, then you've probably gone about it the right way. But it's also vital that businesses uh, like yourselves are tackling these issues head on, that you're keeping people informed, that you're engaging with a situation, whether that's a positive or a negative situation. Make sure that you always communicate what you're doing. Um, businesses should use the power of social media. I think it's clear. Um, the conversations are happening about businesses every single minute of every single day. If you're not there, if you're not engaging, there's something you're missing. Um, maybe you're missing a customer that needs service that you have and you're, and you're missing out on it. Maybe a customer has a problem and you're not engaging and, another, and they, they go elsewhere. Um, I think that's, that's the point, point of using social media. Um, and I think also businesses shouldn't hide away. Don't, don't hide away. Don't think it will pass by. Uh, I can give you my experience, it won't. Um, You've got to deal with these things and you've got to, um, you've got to make sure that you, you do have a plan. Uh, just before I finish and we have lunch, um, go here. Uh, one, two, three is blog. Uh, it's a fantastic resource for small businesses looking for advice, guides, tutorials, um, in uh, video format, in um, written format. It's a fantastic resource. Um, I certainly recommend uh, visiting it. Um, as much as, uh, as, as much as possible, as much as you need it. Um, also, today isn't a one-off for 123Reg. Uh, as Richard was saying earlier, this is part of a wider educational um, commitment that we have to our customers. Um, each month, we host a evening workshop with uh, Enterprise Nation in Somerset House. This is for small businesses to un understand a topic, and we have regular speakers uh, every month to kind of teach you about certain things. So an extension of today is happening. Um, after today, you're not alone. Uh, we're here to help uh, as much as we can. Uh, if you want to connect with me on, I set up a new Twitter for this event, Costello underscore UK, or um, 
connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I don't use Facebook. Uh, and I don't think we have time for questions because we have to have lunch. So thank you for listening and uh, grab me at any time.